Hello, everyone. This is Phil McGrath with the uh, Category Management Chopper Insights Association, and I welcome you uh, to our webinar for today on this uh, Friday, and I hope all is well with you wherever you're located today. We have an outstanding presentation today. It's the, uh, the next norm, technology and analytics to drive the future of space and assortment in tomorrow's category management process. Uh, today's presentation is being put on by uh, Plan Tensa, <clears throat> and we have a great presenter here today with us, uh, Todd McCordy, who is the managing principal at uh, Plan Tensa. Um, Todd is leading Plan Tensa's re retail planning and category management practices. Um, he is an accomplished professional with over 25 years in the industry. He has worked with the uh, uh, category Management Chopper Insights Association for a long time and has really put uh, many uh, bricks in our wall as we've uh, traversed through the industry as it has evolved to where it is today. Uh, he has held a variety of leadership roles for leading supply chain technology forums and Todd has enabled business processes and organizational efforts to implement enterprise merchandising solutions and strategies globally, including many uh, multinational retailers and suppliers. So please get your questions ready for Todd because uh, he's an expert and he'll be able to address them uh, as you enter them. Put your questions in the chat box and uh, we'll have a Q&A period at the end of Todd's presentation. But enter your questions at any time and we'll queue them up at the end of the presentation. Um, Todd, I'm gonna turn the presentation over to you where you can talk a little bit about Plan Tensive. Uh, we all know it, it provides end to end supply chain solutions and proven tools uh, to accelerate value. We know that Plan Tensive has been a strong supporter of the association, has been a sponsor at many of our conferences, and uh, will be at our virtual conference coming up in uh, June, which I hope you'll all be able to attend. And I will also direct the audience here to Plan Tensive has a listing in our marketplace on our on the web page for the CMA, and you'll see a full listing of uh, plant types of in that area. <clears throat> so Todd, with that, I'm gonna turn the presentation over to you and uh, you can take it away. All right, thank you, Phil. <clears throat> All right, as Phil said, uh, plant intensive, we're, we're part of the uh, greater organization known as VACO. Uh, we are focused on end-to-end -end connected supply chain. <clears throat> I'll talk about some of that today, um, but re really our, our roles and, and our company is, is focused on strategy, uh, certainly business strategy, implementation, optimization of, of your solutions and your, your software assets, and then uh, we provide managed services as well. Everything uh, you can think of, including uh, planogram development, we do actually draw a planogram. So we, we think of ourselves as a, a local company, so with local roots, uh, but we do have a global reach. So we do do a lot of things globally. So um, we're very happy to be here today. And, and uh, as always, <clears throat> working with the CMA, uh, we've, we've had a long-term relationship with them. And so very thankful for this opportunity to speak with all of you. So we're not at the new norm. We are truly at the next norm. Um, the past 13 months uh, have really, change the way that uh, consumers truly go to market. Uh, there, it wasn't the case. <clears throat> it wasn't that we didn't have online. It wasn't that we didn't have curbside, but certainly the, the idea of moving to a more digital uh, platform and more digital, uh, certainly operation features have were accelerated, uh, both in the supply chain and, and certainly within the stores themselves uh, as safety and, and things became a concern and, and certainly the ability to get assortments uh, correct and SKUs reduced and, and products able to be purchased. So what I wanna focus on today is <clears throat> really, you know, what we're hearing in the marketplace, um, both from a consumer perspective, uh, the importance of analytics, assortments and space and how those are dynamically starting to, to evolve where technology is, is now playing an even greater role and more advanced technology to really identify who your consumer is. Uh, you know, consumer behavior is is has definitely changed. Uh, it's it's not the, the idea of pick up at curbside or pick up in store is is not going away. 
Uh, it's been a large driver of many of the retailers' success, those that have it and those that have executed it well. It's where the investment lies, right? But also in that investment, understanding who that consumer is. There certainly has been more channel diversity. It's a more informed consumer. Uh, persona, who is buying, has become the, the forefront. Certainly health and wellness, uh, track and trace. So where is my product coming from? What are those ingredients? How do they affect my health and wellness? And then more importantly, <clears throat> contactless shopping has, or curbside has, has increased. And then, you know, analytics, <clears throat> it's not just about having, uh, you know, I think back to 2013 when I was at the NRF conference and they talked about big data. It's not just about lots of data and data for data's sake, but what do you do with that data to execute? How do I look at the market basket and the attachment rates that I'm getting category to category? What's my loyalty data telling me? Where are they? Where's the propensity to shop in those different channels? And how am I capturing more of that share of wallet? <clears throat> Importantly, how am I keeping up with trends, uh, transference, visibility of my supply chain, visibility of my categories, and visibility of what's happening in my stores? And then assortment is tied to that, right? Because <clears throat> I'm looking at the persona. And when I look at the persona and understand the needs, that equals my assort. Um, AI and ML is being introduced more and more into those analytics, and you have to have analytics that are basically conducive to run AI and ML to really get that prescriptive view of what the assortment should be. Uh, everything from, from data, point of sales data, to loyalty data, to market data, to forecast data. Uh, the, the term now less is more, which is interesting because skew rationalization was always part of what we did as category managers in the past. But uh, more importantly now, it's how do, I, how do I focus my category on the items that, that are, are in demand? How do I ensure that I can provide the, the assortment that I have? And then what are those growing segments you know, coming out of a pandemic? Are they more health and wellness? Are they more on the cleaning side? Where are, the, where are my opportunities to really expand assortments? And then more importantly now, as I think about people going curbside, do I need a micro fulfillment center where I keep my fast moving fill-in pantry type items available? Um, and so it takes us to space planning, which is really how do I plan capacity? How do I plan for curbside if I am picking from the shelf or have I dedicated either a micro fulfillment center or a back room area that I've space planned to for those type of items? And then I wanna understand the, the natural affinities in the macro space at the center store. Uh, and more importantly than ever now, because of curbside and because of, of, of online picking, compliance of my planogram <clears throat> is even more critical because that's now driving potentially my wayfinding uh, technologies, potentially driving my ability to send messages to my workforce management tools for picking. Uh, how do I get faster to market? And then more importantly, how do I play the role of, of virtual reality or augmented reality to speed up the planogramming development process as I work with my suppliers? Uh, automation is still very key. How do I automate the building of planograms? And then how do I leverage digital technology like IoT devices and cameras and, and shelf tools to measure in stock, to measure compliance, and really build that those capabilities to be more efficient and more effective as I serve my customers. So lots of things are being thrown around out there. IoT, IOB now, uh, the Internet of Behavior, optimization, what does that truly mean to me? Autonomous, uh, we hear more about more autonomy uh, in the decision process of solutions. How do I automate? What do I automate? Do I automate just planogram build or do I automate the business processes as well? And then platform, cloud, platform, SaaS, those type of conversations. So today what I wanna do is <clears throat> kind of take you through things to consider as you look at your IT investments, as you look at the tools that help you support a lot of these things that we're hearing in the marketplace. So tech, digital technology, you've heard that term, it's it, transformation is happening quickly. Uh, it was probably more accelerated in the past 12 to 13 months than ever before. It continues <clears throat> to be a priority. Um, everything from AI, ML, and data science to, to understand 
the probabilistic forecast to understand the forward thinking, not just what happened in history. How do I blend my data to get better insight to assortment through AI and ML and have that automate some of those processes? And then analyzing the consumer. Who is my consumer? What is driving them? Micro fulfillment centers, are those going to become more important? And you're seeing more and more companies, uh, especially the grocery and, and, and a lot of the other channels, start to build small micro fulfillment centers. The role that AR and VR will play, the role automation plays, definitely compliance technology. We'll talk a little bit about that. Uh, and we'll talk about the digital twins, so connecting the physical and the digital world together to provide insight uh, rapidly through IoT devices. Um, AI and the consumer insight and analytic platform, then cloud platforms, and then you know what's a digital supply chain platform look like when it's all connected end to end. So AI driving assortment has become uh, an important element of where assortment solutions are headed. It's very important to understand uh, to take data, to take lots of data that's that's usually containered somewhere in your organization and being able to apply those consumer behaviors consumer trends, and definitely those personas into an AI-built data to kind of predict and understand the, the, the changes are going to happen more frequently. How do I get them more efficient? How do I automate the tactical to focus on the strategic? Strategic is where I'm reviewing the data, making the data part of my decision process, but I want to automate those tactics to quickly and easily put together assortments and assortment strategies that are going to drive my business. How do I support delisting strategies and synergies between products? Do I have products based on AI that have not, that I've learned through the analysis of the data that have natural affinities or attachment rates to each other as the customer shops those adjacent categories? Do, does that does that formulate a change then in how my store should be laid out to meet those needs and create a more efficient shop and a more efficient replenishment within my operation. Um, personalization, and, and, and as you see here, the, the different channel modalities that are out there, uh, I want to drive personalization. I want to create when the customers are in my store or on my online site, those opportunities for items they buy more frequently. How does the algorithms tell me that this shopper is very loyal to me or to certain brands or to certain products and the frequencies of those? And I also want to create that localized level of assortment that tells them that I understand their needs and need states as they shop my stores and as they shop me in general. Um, I need balanced commerce, meaning I not too much of online and not enough of curbside or too much whatever. I need it balanced to the consumer you know, unless you're in this business, omni-channel is not what they know. What they know is a channel. They know I have a need, I want to procure it, and today I feel like doing it curbside or tomorrow I feel like doing it online. And then how do I improve, again, with personalization, that customer reach? I want to be able to provide offers and provide insight and suggestions as that customer through marketing, as they're shopping my store or as they're online, uh, potentially buying for a pickup or in-store or they're you know, using a little bit of both. And then what am I going to do to drive that incrementality? What are going to be my, my items and products that are going to drive sales uh, in the category? What are, what are the new items that now are, you know, as, as we reduce SKUs uh, in the past year, we're now reintroducing new SKUs. How is that new product introduction going to drive that incrementality for me? And how is it disruptive enough to make the shopper shop my category more more effectively. So more with less, uh, you know, we've, we've heard a lot about it. A lot of it is driven, has been driven off the market dynamics of, of how the purchases is, is done. A lot of it was driven off uh, supplier packaging. A lot of it was driven off from availability of ingredients to build that, those items and create those items to make available. Not to mention the trends, right? Trends are changing much more rapidly because the consumer is much more informed. So who is that customer? How do they consume? And what do we know about their behavior or how they view products and services that we deliver that makes them want to go with our brand or our banner to procure those products? Um, and, and if I lower SKUs too much, what is the portfolio impact, right? Because I look at my all of my assortment in a category as a portfolio of products to serve a need for the customer. So I want to understand 
their behavior and I want to understand their persona. I also want to understand if I introduce more products, am I am I cannibalizing uh, from others? Am I causing transference of that I want them to shift um, and 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 make those other products drive sales as well? And then lastly, I want to balance the cost to carry to that incrementality. So if I'm going to drive you know, five, 10 percent incrementality in a category with new item introduction or reducing SKUs of, of flavors or sizes or products or services that no longer are driving sales, sales have become stagnant. Is there a cost to carry? And, and does that cost mean I go direct to consumer? Does the cost mean I go direct to warehouse or direct to store? Um, you know, what, what are my trade-offs? And then as a retailer, is that a fast enough moving item? Am I, am I trading uh, unproductive inventory for more unproductive inventory. So those are things I've got to really balance out. And, and in addition to that, cost to carry, am I balancing out the needs for resources within my organization to create those assortments, create those planograms, uh, replenish those items? Is there an impact to, to SG&A for having to localize but get too localized or you know, where do I balance those needs for both my online shopper and my in-store shopper? Um, we've seen stores come together as one, Kroger with, with Walgreens, for example, uh, in the past year, and leveraging uh, artificial intelligence and different solutions to, again, understand how that consumer shops, how that consumer feels, what is, who are the personas of those people, who, are, who is shopping me today, and what's the propensity to attract them to my location? Are they concerned with health and wellness? Are they concerned with, you know, um, the ability to get the product as needed? Do are they concerned with where they buy it? Uh, so AI is becoming a way to analyze data that you have available to really give you a clear picture of who that consumer is and really what the direction of those assortments should be should be driven to. Um, AI plays a key role as well in, in again, understanding that persona. Uh, you know, Amazon attributes uh, a large, more than half of its sales to its recommendation engines, right? So you think about personalization, whenever you sign into an online account or you sign into an Amazon, for example, it's, it kind of gets a pattern of who you are and what you traditionally buy so that you can offer better deals or add on you know, basket builders to go to that customer to hopefully drive more sales and opportunities and expose them to more products that you truly carry. AI has also been helpful to companies like Walmart and Amazon uh, because one of the other challenges with online is, as everyone has come across is the return process that uh, reverse logistics how do I how do I incorporate the cost to serve, the cost to localize, the cost to personalize, but also balance it out with the cost to uh, return to vendor or return to reclamation or or what are those what are those things taking away from from the margin that I'm that I'm driving through both online and in source sales. So plays a role uh, very much so in in those decisions. Uh, many of the platforms out there today are taking into account you know, uh, artificial intelligence and, and how those statistical models of machine learning are giving them greater and greater insight to who that customer persona is. Why is that important? Well, if you're doing a lot more buy online or pick up at store or curbside, um, you know, what's the efficiency and, and cost of running your in-store labor who is also servicing your customers, providing sales support, providing restocking versus a micro fulfillment center where you have a small part of your store that's now been converted to those faster moving items. It could be dairy items, bread items, different items that, you know, through analysis are, are pointing to the fact that not only are they bought in store, but they're bought in these, in these centers. And so, you know, those micro fulfillment centers are becoming more and more important as you start to drive more volume out of the store you know, think about it as a warehouse within your store, uh, something that's able to drive and, and support the high volume SKUs that are being ordered. Uh, you're seeing more and more in the market of companies that are doing this, companies like, you know, you see it with Albertsons, you're seeing it with, uh, you know, HEB, you're seeing it with other companies that are focused on 
we want to fulfill and we want to ensure that that product is available when needed. We also want that the in-store experience is just as important, both from our fresh departments, our service levels, and, and certainly our in-stock at shelf. So it's really starting to bring those two worlds together uh, to, to build those efficiencies and really drive the customer uh, service. And, and AI and, and machine learning is part of that. A lot of these fulfillment centers are fulfilled and picked by, by, by robotics. Uh, they're picked by uh, different uh, drones and so forth that are providing the products. So your labor, your labor cost is more on packaging of the, getting the orders ready versus uh, picking and so forth. You know, everything from monitoring temperature to really understanding, you know, what, what the capacity needs are to, to pick the products based on the number of orders per day. So what do we need to do differently, right? What do we need to think about as, as we go forward, right? Uh, discussions between retailers, uh, and suppliers on where the assortment inventory needs to be held. Is it a balanced assortment? Is it DC only? Is it DC and micro fulfillment? Is it direct to consumer? Is it direct to store? Uh, for those higher demand SKUs, uh, in you know thinking about in store versus you know warehouse replenished versus you know uh, picked replenished off a micro fulfillment center. It's important too now more than ever to share data on shopper and market demands collaboratively. Your, your suppliers, your vendors, your category advisors, they have very good insight uh, on a lot of shopper behavior, a lot of personas. They have very good insight on market and market trends on where products are, are directionally heading. So does retailer. Retailer has the understanding of their, their consumer, their most loyal consumer, their shopping patterns and so forth. So coming together on those creates a better opportunity to drive a better assortment and leverage that data uh, inside of AL and ML type forecasting and, and uh, assortment systems that gives you then a better competitive edge. Um, understanding <clears throat> and providing insight as a supplier to the retailer, a new product, <clears throat> new product introduction incrementality metrics. It's a mouthful. Um, how, do we, how do I know as a category manager in my past life that these new, I've done some SKU rationalization for these reasons. I want to I want to tighten up my category, but I also know that this is a category that responds well to new products. But I also want to understand is the incrementality going to drive more cost into my system, or is it going to drive more sales and margin to offset some of that cost? In addition to that, are those products going to be available? Is there any concerns? with um, do you have a diversified as to my supplier do you have a diversified uh, supplier network that you can get ingredients and, and packaging and so forth to support this new item and i want to understand you know what's this going to do for my customers and how am i going to uh, meet the needs that they have uh, move towards solutions that leverage data science ai and ml um, more you're seeing more and more companies both from supplier side and the retail side invest in data science and data scientists. Uh, they want a prescriptive model. Um, I'll go back five years ago, we would hear this a lot about, do you have anything that's more prescriptive uh, to model the assortment, to help with the planning process? And the answer is today is yes. And so how do you leverage, take your data that's, that's prepared and cleansed and formatted into those type of algorithms to start to give you more of a prescriptive view rather than a sometimes a guess view or a, well, this is what happened in the past, so hopefully this is what happens in the future. How do I analyze the shopper? I want to understand their need states. I need to understand how they view the category. And then I want to apply AI to any data that I have available that's going to be value add to my process. So whether it's at the item level, the consumer, or the market level, I truly want to know who that customer is and what they buy. So when I go in to do my uh, line review or I go in to do an unscheduled uh, review and a SKU reduction or, or new items added and I want to continue to build upon these, these category growth, I want to understand that the data I have is giving me a clear direction of where I can go. So how does that play with the space plan? <clears throat> Important. Uh, space planning uh, has brought a new level of importance. And it's, uh, I'll say it's not about the picture anymore. The picture's important. It's definitely a guide. It's definitely how 
the, the data is telling us the shop reviews the category and shops it. But now it's become, as I said, kind of that uh, pick slot locator, right? So when you think about uh, warehouses of the past, they had pick slots and they had pickers and they had devices to know where those items are at. We're now seeing that for the, the companies or the stores or the retailers that don't have uh, or have created micro fulfillment centers, they are picking from the shelf and they need to know where that's at and they need to have the efficiency. So Planogram now is playing a key role in identifying where those products are at. It, it plays a key role in handhelds for the, the location. It's going to play a key role uh, at some point in how does the macro space or the floor plan layout support the ability to pick products efficiently and, and move more faster as more and more companies move towards micro fulfillment. In the meantime, how do I establish um, where those products are at? And not just for picking for curbside, but also for replenishing potentially from my back rooms or when warehouse or direct to store comes in, how do I re replenish those shelves much more efficiently, much more faster by having that information available? I can also manage my labor through that. And the planogram now has become more that the tool and the map, the guide that I will need to help pick those products and make those products available. Um, <clears throat> I talked earlier about AR and uh, augmented and virtual reality. Uh, you know, traditionally there is, there's innovation centers or set centers where supplier retailer come together on, on a category strategy. Part of that strategy is presentation to the customer. How is it going to be presented? How is it going to be merchandised in a way that exposes not only the products that drive the category, the common products, the, your core, but how is it going to introduce the new items that are going to help drive additional sales and attachment rates within there? So that was fly to location or drive to location and spend a lot of time and do a lot of things. We're now um, doing this through virtual reality. You can have a store that is the exact layout. You can take the planograms and the space plans and bring those into that, that AR uh, VR engine. And together we're collaboratively, you know, from many, many miles away through hollow lenses on setting up the store and reviewing the metrics and looking at the, the adjacency flows. And, you know, there's even companies out there that <clears throat> can do virtual shops. So you can understand the data coming back, similar to household panel data, of where the customer's eyes go. You know, if I introduce new products, do I put them in the middle? Do I put them on the top shelf? Where does the customer look for these? And what is their shopping pattern before they get to those items? So it's it's merchandising literally in real time. It saves cost, it saves money, uh, it improves the speed and efficiency because the collaboration is done as the planogram is being built. Uh, you reduce your time to market. You're hearing more and more about, you know, 22 week window is not gonna work. We need an eight to 10 week window, if not sooner, to get products in the stores and to uh, set that space so our customers have the latest and greatest. So it really does improve uh, supplier collaboration, retailer supplier collaboration, and it improves the ability to take planograms that you're building and place them into the VR solution and be able to then collaboratively move things around, understand the analytics behind it, and make those quick decisions. Even if in this aisle where this gentleman is staring, maybe that product's not best there. So I flip it to another aisle and I get some insight to where that's at, but I'm not having to rebuild it. I've actually got it built and we're agreeing and collaborating and moving much faster. Uh, which ties to faster, right? Faster is about moving quickly and, and, and getting rid of redundant tasks or tasks that could be done by the machine. So automation is still very important. Uh, planogram automation and the technology out there today is about, you know, how do I build lots of different planogram de uh, heights, depths, widths, and also localization? <clears throat> how do I use rules and science to really understand where uh, those products should be carried or not carried uh, due to due to whatever reason? But it's it's expediting the process of building planograms. It's expediting the process of, of delivering data into the planogram so I can have the time to not draw and drop and drag and not be you know, in, in this redundant role of doing that, but in a role that's looking at the information and the data that's coming into the planogramming tool to be able to understand how this is gonna be perceived, what were the directional strategies from the standpoint of the, the consumer uh, persona insights, um, it can allow me to 
uh, automation to send uh, planograms to stores through through the web and be able to use in-store technology or task assignment to expedite the, the flow of goods or the expediency of planograms to be built. Um, it helps with in-store replenishment uh, and it has a document workflow. So again, automation is not just about <clears throat> how many planograms I can build, though that's important. It's also about how do I build them in a fast way that I can then share potentially through what I talked about before with VR to get faster to market and to at the same time refocus and repurpose my team on what is, what is the business telling us? What is the data telling us about these solutions? Um, and that ties in very, very closely and importantly to compliance. Visualization uh, is very big. Uh, we've talked in the in the past about gamification software uh, that uh, the next generation of of space planners, you know, the, some of the tools that are out there today have been modernized. Uh, they've been re re refreshed to look more modern, to look more gamified. But when it comes to implementing all of the work and all of the analysis alone, won't solve um, the the problem if you don't have the capability to implement that correctly. So there is technology out there today to check compliance. There's technology out there today to understand uh, where the where the location should be. And there's technology out there today that really drives step-by-step step where uh, you literally have the planogram and literally is asking you for, for questions around is the fixtures correct? Can I order that fixture? Um, if I don't have it, can I place an order right there in the aisle? Do I have all my product? And really is a, is a gamified approach. And at the same time, these are also providing feedback and the feedback is being used to make sure that the product is in stock, to make sure that the compliance is correct. And again, all of this is being tied to the ability to not just, not just have in stock, better in stock percentages, but also to be able to support a lot of the in-store picking that is taking place. So why is that important? Well, there's a lot of IoT devices. There's a lot of camera usage is, is one of them. Scanners, sensors, um, robotics, things that are now being put into stores to help with replenishment, to help identify out of stocks, and, and again, alert you know, those out of stock situations to that workforce tool to assign a task to a person to go fill that spot. Uh, digital twin is another where you're really bringing together the physical and the digital world where I'm getting that real time information from those sensors uh, that that I am missing. Uh, I do have an out of stock situation or I have a situation uh, in which a uh, product is moving much faster. I'm getting greater demand for that product and that's being fed back to me at home office so I can quickly make a change or in the future that that change would happen. There would be a the, back to the word autonomous, where it would, you know, create a new order that would send to the store. Uh, it would, it would be coming through the cloud or it would be coming through other sources. It may even trigger an order at the warehouse. So, digital twin is is really bringing together a replication of data that typically sometimes we have to wait for it to upload. It can bring that data to us much quicker, uh, allowing for insight such as out of stocks or or you know, insight on traffic patterns, insight on how things are being shopped, how accurate the, the planogram, is there an out-of-stock uh, situation? So it's it's really that, that new technology that really drives and brings together the digital technology world with the physical technology world. So <clears throat> space planning, um, collaboration between retailer and supplier, it is, it is we, we probably have talked about this for 20 years, but now more than ever, how do I expedite speed to market? You know, last year we we you know there was there was a great deal of sales gain, but there was also some some brands that had to be you know just for whatever reason packaging supplies whatever had to be removed from the category. We've learned from that. How do we get faster to market? And more importantly, how do we collaboratively build compliance together and really understand that you know each of us has a role in that compliance. And then <clears throat> automating the building of planograms and even assortments to a degree, um, how that impacts SGNA. So it's not anymore about the term throwing bodies at it. It's about automating for efficiency and it's about automating for speed. Um, leverage AR and VR. 
those there's solutions out there today that can look at your your floor plan or your layout, uh, your macro space. So if I take the roof off, how is how are things looking if I'm if I'm in the aisle? And also, how can I expedite the process of of building that planogram together, getting the collaboration, building our go-to-market strategy in the store with my supplier and my retailer in a cost-effective manner? Tie your space plan to your macro space. You know, understand those affinity categories. You know, we traditionally like to say, well, we're gonna we're gonna build categories and category adjacencies based on how the category flows, but that may not be how the shopper shops it. So, how do we understand the macro space changes? Where's their macro space opportunities, and where's their opportunities that, if we can make it more convenient, focus more on on growing categories within our stores and the center store, uh, focus on how we bring customer to that to that location to expose them to those those new products how do we do that in a way through science that that helps us understand those hot spots and flow and what departments should be incorporate the plantogram into restocking in the picking process with your with your workforce handhelds um, integrate um, your plantogram into analytic engines it's very important to you know hopefully in real time through through a digital twin perspective understand the, the early impacts understand that you know i've got impacts in that category we thought something was working it's not working uh what what is it we're not doing right do we need to promote it more whatever but i'm getting that insight faster and instead of waiting six months for the next category review i'm making those adjustments and changes as the as the category matures and as the, the new products available and then ilt devices i've heard a lot about them uh, there's companies out there that can grab information from the camera can provide shelf level camera there's shelf sensors for uh for weight as things become more out of stock you know because the goal here is how do we keep in stock and restock and make sure that compliance is there uh, by leveraging technology in a digital world that helps us uh, identify where where our kind of our hot spots or trouble spots are and we can quickly respond to those uh, before they become problems so why is why is this stuff so powerful right why is data is more than just data right it's about the execution the execution is absolutely key and, and oftentimes we get overwhelmed with data because you hear uh, I, I work with retailers and suppliers that will say you know what i'm not quite sure what to do with it or i'm not quite sure what i need to execute this so <clears throat> it's a matter of really understanding um, that what is it i want to what do i want to discover and by discovering that, what is that gonna drive my business? So I wanna know what my retail, as a retailer, I wanna know what my customers are doing in my stores. I wanna know how they perceive my stores. I wanna know what they're buying. I wanna know where else they're going. I wanna know what they prefer online versus in home. Uh, I wanna know everything about them because that persona is gonna help me build a, an assortment and a, and a store and, and its adjacencies and so forth to best meet the needs of, of my customers that shop me. As a supplier, having that insight and knowledge helps me predict trends and helps me predict what categories are probably on a decline, but these other categories are on a growth curve. And how do I expose more of those products to my customers based on their, their needs, their trends, and the things that, that concern them most? So <clears throat> really it's uh, where data meets technology, right? So digital twins, um, sensor devices, analytics, shoppers insight, real-time task assignment and so forth. It's, it's those things around that consumer that help me be better. It's, it's taking technology and leveraging it to not just put another me too item, uh, another, in this case, another flavor of jelly or fruit, but something that really respond, the customer responds to and sees that as a need for themselves. Um, but you know, in order to do that, I need to be able to execute upon it. So I need to be able to render those insights in a dashboard way or in a model that provides not just a bunch of information, but information that I can go execute on, or I can have that information become at some point autonomous that recognizes benchmarks and key KPIs that then executes a workflow to somebody to help them do that process or change that process. Um, it's it's got to be workflow driven. It's got to be able to be responsive and it's got to be able even to uh, send me a message to say, are you aware or there's a caution that, hey, these products are 
are trending above uh, are trending above the current demand or trending below. Uh, it's got to dynamically be able to update, and it's got to provide me that prescriptive action that I need to go execute upon data. It's, it's one thing to analyze and have a playbook to go into uh, an assortment review or into a space review or into a strategy review with those data facts. It's another thing to leverage data in the future to help go do a lot of those autonomous things that today, you know, we have to bring a person into, but in the future, the data would, would prescribe as the machine learns what you would do in that situation. So what do I need to do differently? Well, shared data across the enterprise. It, within any organization, in a lot of cases, data is very siloed by, by area. Um, there are opportunities to share data, not just the assortment information, planogram information, um, but there's also forecast information. There's other information that's stored. Where is all of that information? And how can it drive my digital platform? And then more importantly, do we have a strategy? Uh, do have we, as, as a senior leadership team or as a team, developed a strategy to deploy the data sharing and a governance model to help govern what data, uh, how we receive data, the security of data, and so forth, and then what condition is it in? What format is it in? Is it structured or unstructured? Is it set up and is it created in a way that can be consumed by uh, the AI algorithms that help the machine learn, right? So it's not just about having a bunch of information, it's about having that information in a way that can be used by those algorithms. More importantly is governance, right? I wanna be able to, <clears throat> I wanna have attributes. Attributes are what drives my planning. Attributes is what makes the consumer decide what they're gonna buy and how they're gonna use it. So back to that consumer behavior. Um, you know, but I need to have standards so that everyone does attributes the same way. I need to govern how data is shared. I need to govern how we receive data and how we parse out data so that we're, we're always clean with it. It's, it's driving more of the engine. It's driving more of that insight and being able to prescribe and predict. Um, security is always a key, especially today. Security standards are, are part of that whole governance process. And what a lot of companies are doing is creating these centers of excellence or COEs that this group is responsible for data. They, they, they uh, manage it, they run the governance on it, they manage the attribute process, they manage the new item process, but it's not to, so to speak, you know, lock it down, but to make sure it's clean and it's ready and it can be consumed by these, by these solutions that are using AI and ML algorithms. Um, and then, not only does it need to be cleansed and ready, but how am I rendering the information? Do I have dashboards? Um, I remember my time <clears throat> working with a retailer and every Monday morning, you know, the printers are uh, going nonstop because everyone's trying to print their reports for, you know, to go through the weekend or the week or locked forecast. And, you know, this way, if I've got it on a dashboard, I can quickly look at it, go to that meeting, share that information, uh, in near real time and, and be able to have a very productive uh, conversation. So lastly, cloud platform technologies. Um, what does all that mean? Like, how is this all, why is this important? You know, why are platform technologies becoming the norm? Why is, why are more and more software companies and more and more companies shifting to uh, the, the workforce doc, you know, workforce.com or salesforce.com? Number one is driven by use case, not just by a, a technology solution, but what are we trying to do in our business? That means we need uh, a platform to not only ingest data, but to execute other applications and other processes within our organization. And so cloud and platform technologies are really a, a large ecosystem. It's a large ecosystem where the cloud is really where the, you know, the applications are managed. Um, APIs or application uh, programming interfaces, which is really a, a fancy way of, uh, of transporting data uh, and business services, another way to take business logic or how we would do something with the human mind and turn that into uh, a code that executes upon that. How do we get a platform that connects my supply chain, connects my planning processes, connects my stores, uh, connects my consumer to me, uh, and orchestrates all of that 
in a way, uh, leveraging AI and ML, uh, capturing data into a data lake has scalability to scale up and scale down depending on the demands of all the system applications. Uh, provides visibility to me, visibility from what's happening in the store, what's happening at the shelf, what's happening in my supply chain, or where are my products at any given time. So platforms or uh, some of them are done in SaaS models, which means software as a service, which means a company is managing all of your data infrastructure in a data center that's very secured, but basically you're reaching it through through basically the web as though you would Google information, your applications are there. More and more people are doing that because they can bring in data from other sources, you know, third-party sources, um, weather, uh, events, things like that. Uh, and it also is, is very secure, but it also is very scalable. And I can move that data to other parts of my applications that consume it to go execute uh, on my strategy or go execute on a process. So that's that's really uh, where a, a lot of companies are headed. That's where even a lot of companies today, uh, whether they they choose a uh, supplier, you know, you, there's a lot of them out there, certainly AWS, Microsoft, Azure, um, Google, and so forth that this is what they do. They, they literally will, will make these available. And then when you hear the word native SaaS, that means that it was built in a cloud native uh, solution that's built on a data science or MI uh, machine learned action or machine learned uh, infrastructure. So why is this important? Because all the things that we've been talking about really fundamentally come together in the digital strategy. Assortments, insights, building that capability, how is the purchase experience? How is the supply chain planning? What's my what's going on in my supply chain? Where's my inventory at any one time? How do I get visibility to it? Is it on a ship? Is it on a truck? Where is it? How's my store inventory visibility? Is it in the back room? Is it coming inbound? Is the shelf still full? Micro fulfillment, what products are in there? What's my inventory at any given time? And then automating a lot of these processes, not just necessarily planogram automation, but also assortment automation, also task automation uh, with, with, with workforce devices, and really bringing together all the modalities that the customer focuses on to buy and procure product. So a digital strategy takes into account a platform, which we just talked about, takes into account all the, the application management that really executes these, takes into account the data that needs to be structured to really drive the, the machine learned and, and drive the AI algorithms. It takes into account what's going on within my, within my business and really brings that together in near real time so that at any time, 24 by seven, the term always on, it truly is always on. I'm able to, uh, in some cases, autonomously make decisions. In other cases, make decisions as they happen in real time, as I'm being fed that information back from those locations. So bringing all that together and thinking about where that, where that all comes together and why this is all happening is really what's, what's driving um, the direction of, of many, many providers today is, is building upon a platform so that some of your data can be consumed, some of the, someone else's data can be consumed, but more importantly, it's the visibility and the plan to action that is really becoming more critical. So a couple, couple things from an RIS uh, uh, survey that was done in September. Um, you know, where are the planned upgrades, right? Uh, data security definitely is, is top of mind. In-store analysis, so you know, with IoT devices and so forth, what's happening in the store, data visualization and dashboards, I wanna see it in real time, and then enterprise and BI reporting tools. Oddly enough, Less than 25% is, is focused on you know, web and online analytics. Those are very, very critical as more and more online customers happen. And then how do I get more insight to customer personalization, uh, more insight to my loyalty data, more insight to consumer behavior so I can analyze who my consumer is. And then <clears throat> focus for retail uh, that we've seen, uh, certainly demand forecasting. And I think that that would be true across the supplier community as well. Consumer insights, how do I plan my inventory, pricing, and then personalization, logistics optimization. So it's it's one thing to personalize your assortments and carry products that are very unique to that market, but can I do it in a cost-effective way based on where my logistics, uh, both my cost to, to move that product 
and cost to carry that product within a warehouse or in a distribution facility. Um, oddly enough, uh, a lot of the retailers are not ad allocating more of their budget to these to these our IT budget to these uh, processes, and it needs to be. It's it's not about take all your profit and put it into consumer insight, but it's understanding that digital capabilities and digital trends are happening. They're happening now. And, and how do we start to prepare, if not this year, into next year to, to really get in front of the needs that are gonna need to be happening to, to build effective assortments. So in closing, um, <clears throat> data needs to support AI and ML, that's important. You've gotta have an enterprise data strategy. It's, it's important to have that and understand, and everyone understands what that strategy is. Thinking about AR and VR to merchandising as a new approach digital twin technology to get real real time information from the digital world, uh, real time inventory insight. So where am I at in inventory position at any time and also visibility to where that inventory is at. More of a probabilistic forecast, so more of a future trend forecast taking into account other data points, things like weather and events and other things that help drive forecasting for those future trends and assortment and new product introduction. Thinking about the role of the planogram, as I said, it's not just a picture anymore. Uh, the key role of automation, automation is, is, is where we want to get rid of those redundant tasks and we want to expedite that process of getting speed to market. Data sharing, both retailer and suppliers really planning together, but also that means sharing data together. Uh, that helps them drive towards a common good, which is where that customer shops them and how they shop their brands and banners. And then considering platform technology as it begins to uh, become more and more prevalent in the industry, um, SaaS models are certainly software as a service or platform as a service. That's what those means that you actually pay someone else to manage your, your infrastructure in these particular areas of assortment and space, uh, but it also allows you to have scale and so forth and focus IT department to focus on other key areas uh, within your building. So with that, uh, with the time we have left, we can certainly open it up for any questions, Phil. Okay, uh, Todd, thank you very much. Very insightful presentation here today. Um, hey, to everybody out there, um, if you've got a question for Todd, uh, enter it in your chat uh, box right now, and uh, we'll be able to convey the uh, question with Todd, and uh, he's agreed to do a Q&A with us uh, uh, for the remaining minutes. So please enter your questions. I'll be glad to address it with Todd. Hey, Todd, the one slide that really caught my attention is uh, uh, I, when you uh, showed the retail store with the IoT and digital twin um, and all the technology that is there that is really allowing uh, both the, the retailer and if they share it with the vendor to understand compliance at a high level and being able to track the effectiveness of it. Are you finding there are like pods of retail channels or retail size um, that are really best in class in this type of technology? Yeah, there are. I, I, you're seeing, uh, uh, especially, you know, there's there's a there's at least one uh, I'll call drug operation out there um, that sounded bad, but um, <laughs> drugstore uh, chain that has leveraged robotics and has leveraged IoT devices to help um, uh, make ensure uh, even wayfinding within their app to tell you at what store where that product is located. So that technology has become more uh, available. You're seeing it more also from, from grocery chains where they are, have been hit with the uh, curbside and, and trying to figure out how do I how do I manage my labor allocation to still service my customers, but at the same time um, make available where that inventory is at at any given moment, right? And mm -hmm. IoT devices, and, and even for a while, uh, some companies still have RFID to, to really track and trace where some of that product is at. Um, it's still not there yet uh, to say that we know we're in the store where inventory is at at any given time. It's improved, it's better these cameras and IoT devices have improved it certainly, but um, you know, it's still hard to track where something's in a, in a, in a moving cart. But I, I would say that probably in the next five years, more and more of that camera and sensor technology will be able to do that. Mm -hmm. Good. Um, if 
I'm sitting at the category management chapter insights desk today, planning for the future in, in you know advancement and skill sets and career uh, uh, trajectory. You know, what do you think of the skill sets that the uh, folks at Dell's desk on the manufacturer side really have to be able to uh, bring to the game going forward? Yeah, I, you know, I'll tell you the days of looking through tons of spreadsheets, <clears throat> especially with the, the newer generations coming in that are, are fulfilling these roles. You know, they want prescriptive gamified technology, the, the dashboards, the, mm -hmm. uh, you know, click on the button and it'll give you the answer or that data flows to other locations. So, you know, tomorrow's and today's category managers uh, and even analysts are, are focused on you know, technology to prescribe. Uh, they want something that's exciting and, and intuitive, uh, and they're very analytical. They have more of that understanding of analysis and technology than ever before because of things like video games and handheld devices and so forth. So I want to look for someone that that's, understands technology, someone that's excited about uh, new technology and, and what technology we should be using to, to get us to those places with our customers. Um, and, and ensuring that you know we're providing that as a, as the employer we're providing that type of technology to attract uh, those type of resources those skilled resources that we're we're all looking for. Great. Well, um, that about brings us close to the uh, top of the hour. Uh, I really uh, like the responses to those last couple of questions I asked. Um, you've got for the audience, Todd McCordy has got his information up on the screen. You're going to get an email from us at the conclusion of the uh, webinar a little bit later today. And if you're a member, it'll have a link to the slides that are in the uh, resource library where uh, Todd's information will be housed. You can also reach out directly to Todd as he has it on the screen here today. Um, Todd, do you have any uh, closing thoughts you'd like to uh, say? Yeah, I, I, I know we, uh, or I threw a lot at you there, but it's it's important to note that um, you know five years ago I presented at a at a conference uh, about these things that we're talking about today and they're here right they're here now and they're continuing to evolve and uh, as technology continues to advance and as these solutions continue to to create those efficiencies they're really tools to help you get closer to the customer and really fine tune. Um, your assortment and analytic plans to, to drive forward. So, you know, five years ago, we talked about, hey, these things are coming, they're now here. Um, and, and how do you leverage the technology going forward in your digital strategy to, to take advantage of these type of solutions that are out there? Great. Uh, thank you, Todd. To the audience, thank you for your participation. Thank, thank you, you yes. for, uh, for sitting in here today on this presentation. And um, uh, I would like to uh, wish you all have a wonderful weekend. Todd, again, thank you and to your team at Plantensa for all the support you provide to the CMA and with this presentation today. Thank you, Phil. Thank you, everyone. So with that, uh, we'll conclude today's uh, webinar and everyone have a wonderful weekend and we'll talk to you maybe next week on our next webinars.